Hi, welcome back. This is Chrysler 46RE class part one, lesson one. I'm excited about this class. This transmission is sentimental to me. The 46RE is actually a descendant of the first transmission that I ever rebuilt, which by the way, was a Torque Flight 727. I want you excited too. So let me share with you an inspiring story related to it. One of the great automotive leadership stories of the 20th century is of not only the beloved father of the Ford Mustang, but also the endeared savior of Chrysler Corporation. They are the same person, Lido A. Iacocca. He started at the bottom with Ford in 1948. 26 years later, in 1974, he was president. Then he got fired. Apparently, he was canned for no other reason than making Henry Ford II look bad. The effect on not only Mr. Iacocca, but also his family, was horrible. He and his wife Mary experienced social blacklisting. Their young children suffered through brutal indignities at school. When it's this bad, most banished executives in this situation go off into retirement, defeated, never to be heard from again. Leah Coco, on the other hand, would go on to make a stunning personal and professional comeback, eclipsing everything he had ever accomplished at Ford. The story of his leadership to turn around the financially struggling Chrysler Corporation in the 1980s is incredible. Anyone can get knocked down. Great people don't stay down. They don't quit. They get back up. They fix what's wrong and get going again. Somewhat like Mr. Iacocca, this 1996-46RE is not doing very well. As a matter of fact, it would not do anything before it was removed from a Dodge Ram 1500 pickup. But its story won't end here. We're going to take it completely apart, discuss it, determine what replacement parts it will need, and then reassemble it to like new condition. Like Lee, this transmission is about to begin chapter two of his life, and you're invited to come along as this incredible mechanical comeback story unfolds. And as I mentioned in the introduction, this class also includes instruction for the 46 and 47 RH, as well as the 47 and 48 RE models too. The video lessons of this class are divided into two parts. Part one has several lessons about setting up an ideal work area, an introduction to the tools you'll need, a discussion about model variations, and finally, the transmission disassembly. Part two is the reassembly. The lessons will include an introduction to replacement parts and where to get them, as well as helpful tips on common problems you may encounter as we move step by step through the reassembly. The lessons usually last only a few minutes and cover one or two areas of the transmission at a time. This way you can always find a convenient place to stop for a while and start again later. By the end of the class, you and I together will have dissected, diagnosed, and finally reassembled the entire transmission. If you haven't set up an area to work in yet, consider copying this workspace arrangement. I use two separate surfaces as you see here. I have the transmission to disassemble on one bench and another larger area to place parts and sub-assemblies on as I remove them from the case. 
Duplicate these separate areas as close as you can in your work area because it's important to set parts where they can remain in the order in which they were removed without being disturbed. I'm going to flash forward so you can see how my benches look at the end of the teardown. Here's the transmission disassembled. Notice the parts and subassembly placement. They're arranged neatly and orderly. This is our goal to reach by the end of part one, so keep this in mind as you set up your workspace. Once again, it's important to have a separate area where parts won't be disturbed until you're ready to begin reassembly. Now let's take a look at the tools and other things we'll need for this project. If you think you need a lot of special or unusual tools to work on the 46RE, well you're wrong. Most of the tools we'll use are common mechanics hand tools like the ones you see here. The most exotic ones are this inch pounds torque wrench and welder's vice grip pliers which we'll use to compress a servo cover. We will not be using any power tools such as impact guns or air ratchets because aluminum is a soft, fragile metal. The threads of the bolt holes can strip easily if you over tighten bolts. A source of compressed air and a blow gun can be used to dry parts and make tests. I'll be using a simple air tank and regulator like this to air check servos as well as the forward and direct clutch during reassembly in part two. A unique tool you will need access to is a shop press. There are two sub-assemblies in this transmission which require considerable pressure to compress springs for a complete disassembly. The direct clutch drum and the overdrive section direct clutch assembly have retaining snap rings which can only be removed safely with a device like this. I'll discuss this press and these procedures in a later lesson. Reassembly of the 46RE is not only safer but also much easier if the transmission is positioned upright. I don't recommend attempting to assemble this transmission on its side because it's too awkward. In part two of the class, I'll show you how to make this simple fixture made from two befores and a few three inch wood screws. You can make it quickly and it will only cost about $12 for the materials. The top of the fixture is about 26 inches off the ground and places the case at a comfortable work height as you install parts from the top down. Taking the time to make this fixture is a great investment. Once again, I'll show you how it's easily made in part two. Finally, you need a commitment to your safety. In addition to safe tools and work areas, you absolutely must have gloves, safety glasses, and a full face shield in order to work safely on this transmission. This machine is heavy, many edges are very sharp, and there are four areas of high spring tension that must be respected. Always protect your fingers, hands, and wrists when you work around sharp edges by wearing thick leather gloves. And from this point forward, you must wear glasses, and eventually I will insist that you wear the full face shield during disassembly and reassembly of the direct clutch and overdrive direct clutch assemblies. I promise to remind you again later. That's about it for this lesson. We've looked at an ideal work area, talked about the tools you'll need, and very importantly, discuss necessary safety equipment. In lesson two, we begin transmission disassembly. I'll see you there.